I, I got one big question. How fucking good is the penguin? Ah. <laughs> the penguin's pretty fucking good. I think we yeah. the penguin needs a moment. Yeah. Just to, to, to yeah. dive. And let's talk about Colin Farrell for a second, Lance. man. I mean, Colin Farrell is killing it. I mean, you don't you don't recognize him, of course, because of all the makeup. Yeah. But even the voice, you don't even I, I don't even hear him. I'm yeah. like going I, I sit there and I go, Are you sure that's Colin Farrell? Yeah. Because I don't hear him, I don't see him. Yeah. And I'm looking at his eyes and I go, I don't and, I don't see somebody his else. eye I, it's, it's his eyes. Yeah. Colin it is. Farrell does a, a Heath Ledger type of performance. He does. It's like he he melts into If this he character. doesn't get an Emmy, I yeah. swear to God. Yeah. yeah. He yeah. is a, I it, half the time I constantly say, well, Colin Farrell's name's in it. Yeah. But I don't see Colin Farrell. And because I see this character, and this character is so fully formed now that I root for him. And at times I'm like looking at him like this guy's a homicidal maniac. But what the show has done so far and what you'll see in the, this latest episode, um, no spoilers, but it's just like I now care about each and one of these characters. And so... But I'm also seeing how Oz is now turning into really becoming the penguin. Right. You know, and it's just such a, and she's great. Uh, Sophia, um, um, the actress that's playing her is the just. The Falcon. Yeah. I mean, it's she's nailing it. All the actors, this, this is just great acting. But it's, it's also great, great acting, writing. it's great writing, it's great directing. The, the visuals, yeah. the movie looks, or the show looks terrific. Uh, I mean, we saw a taste of the penguin just a bit role pretty much in the Batman, mm -hmm. which he was excellent in. Yeah. But he's taken it now to another level in this show. I mean, it's hard R. I mean, hard there's, R. there's nothing PG about this no, thing at all. No, no. I mean, even, even the first episode, you're going, oh, we're going there. Okay. It, Sopranos and Breaking Bad had a baby, and that baby's the penguin. And you cut out all the exposition and the fat and the, and the going to get the paper on the sidewalk and stuff. That, that, that That's when, you know, for me... I. I I love The Sopranos, but there were so many episodes that was just walking and talking or sitting and talking, and just and then every like every like five or six episodes there would be something amazing happen, you know. Yeah. But you had to sit through a lot of stuff in between. Now people say that's character development. It's like you got nothing better to do than sit around and talk. Well, I think television would lean into that because at the time they used to have to fill. 24 episodes a year right now right. it was a lot of work but it was also a lot of work yeah and now even on hbo max or at the time hbo when the soprano came along i think they would do 10 episodes per season or something right. like that so there was always it's like a novel sometimes you can go into characters backgrounds further in a, as a tv show i think sometimes the problem is that there's usually characters that they're maybe not that interesting or that's not your favorite character. So we're doing Uncle Paulie's backstory on this particular, you know, thing, and you're just like, I don't care. You yeah. Know? And what what I find is interesting in the, the season of The Penguin is there is no filler episode. No, they hit the it, ground running, and every episode feels it's better like... better than the next. Yeah, every episode I feel like if I mess it, I'm going to mess a huge yeah. key plot point. Yeah. And that's a, something that I remember uh, the first season of uh, House of Dragons was like that. Yes. Where every episode you felt like, I got to watch every episode because I'm going to mess something. Unfortunately, season two did not do that. Well, I mean, but also remember in the season one, they were also doing jump cut, time right. cuts. Exactly. And that was a, that was somewhat new uh, on television because those characters had to, they had to deal with all the stuff within like a 10 to 15 year time period. And they were aging. And they were aging kids and stuff like adults, that, but yeah. they kept it moving. They kept it going. Another TV show that I think did an excellent job. I can't wait to season two is Andor. Right, because I thought Rogue One was okay movie when I saw it. It's okay. It, I, I, I mean, I, considering all the Star Wars movies that came out it's recently, the it's, it's the, the best, best one. It's the yeah, best one, yeah. But hands down. But then watching Andor, and Andor uh, was doing kind of like a three episode beginning, middle, and end storyline. Let's move on to another. But but then all of a sudden, but it was like no fillers. They were giving you information, and then you were off going, and then it just got better and better. And I feel like that's what Penguin is. It's like there's no filler because they're treating this almost like this is a limited series. Well, it also gives you confidence in the filmmakers and the people doing it because they feel like, oh, we, we, uh, uh, 
normal show would have would have drawn this out to where the, these plot points wouldn't happen until like third or fourth season down yeah, the road. Yeah, yeah. And the fact that they're doing it so quickly now, it's like, wow, you must have a lot in the tank, right? <laughs> yeah. You got yeah. you got a lot more ideas that you're going to at least explore, I'm hoping anyways. Yeah. Well, no, yeah. and they're doing yeah. that. And that's the thing. Like even today, I'm watching this episode, and I'm like, oh, already you guys are already doing this. Oh, we're already here. Yeah. And, I, you know, a lot of times I can look at this and go, if I was a producer – that wanted to stretch out a season, like I want five seasons. Yeah. I could have looked at that episode I saw last night and said, this could have been season four. Yeah. Like yeah. you're starting on episode six, what technically could have been a whole beginning of season four. And I'm so glad they're not doing that. I'm yeah, so I'm, glad because I, I see that and it's like, it gives me confidence to know that, oh, so you're going to give us all, it, it reminds me of a James Cameron movie. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember seeing Terminator 2 right. the first time. And I remember there was a point in that movie where I'm like, okay, I'm yeah. done. I'm yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. I'm good. I'm good. I am yeah. satisfied. Right, I could go right. home right now right. and I'd be a happy I'd camper. Happy. I would love yeah. this movie. Yeah. But no. no. James comes, no, we got 20 more minutes. What? And he yeah. delivers. And he delivers. And you're going, yeah. yes, that's what you want out yeah. of any filmmaker or, or a television show is that – that not only do we deliver, but oh, and we're going to give you a little some. cherry on top. Well, yeah. look, I remember I felt that way with the Matrix, with the when, when exactly. He, yeah, when he survived the underground um, fight scene with Mr. Smith and stuff, and I was just like, Agent Smith, I'm like, it, the movie could end yeah. right now, yeah. and you've won. Yeah, you've got me. By then, when they did the whole stopping the bullet, he's the one. Yeah, and the music kicked out. Yeah. It's like ah. Yeah, hold my beer, right? Yeah, it's just, yeah, that's awesome. But yeah, you always want to leave them wanting more. But some filmmakers give you more and enough where yeah. you're so satisfied that. The, but those are the movies you see again and again and again. Well, he even did it in Aliens. Remember, yeah. uh, Cameron did it in Aliens. You know. Oh yeah. Uh, with with that whole third act, it's like, oh my god. And the first Terminator too. Yeah. It's just there's always more. But sometimes you you gotta be careful not to yeah. be. You gotta know how to do it. Right. You got to know how to give. Because sometimes, now I see movies where I'm like, enough, too much, <laughs> stop it, it's, stop it. And it goes on forever, and it's usually boring action. Yeah. Or it's white noise because yeah. it's like, I don't care. Well, like a like a Michael Bay movie. Like, you know, yeah, it's like. that's what but, I was. But no, I mean, going back to uh, The Penguin, um, it's excellent on every level. I, I can't think of anything I could even criticize that show works on all cylinders and if they continue man i mean um now i i think some characters are gonna die well know? and and i think that's that's awesome i mean honestly i mean yeah. as as much as these characters are cool and that you'd like to see them live on and, and do more stuff with them i love sophia i love victor i love yeah. i i even love um, oz's mom yeah but you know at this point some, anybody can go. Anybody really. can go. And that's another thing, too. I have concern for Oz, even though I know he survives. But I because the movie does such a great job of putting you in his shoes. Yeah. So you really do get that sense of anxiety wherever he goes in a situation or something happens. And everything, something always screws up. Every everything time. Everything always screws up. Every he's, he's got to think off the fly. And usually yeah. it's, it, it's usually something involves some brutality. But I will yeah. say that this was the first episode, the episode that I saw, was the first time I st I really started seeing the Penguin. Right. Before I was watching Oz. Right. I was watching Oz. But this episode, and even the behind the scenes don't really talk about it, uh -huh. but I was like, oh, yeah. there's the Penguin. Yeah, yeah okay. This is the one Batman's going to be fighting. Well, it's also interesting that there's times when you're actually feeling bad for the guy. You know, there's oh, times yeah. when you, you really identify with him and you're going, oh, man, if you could just get a break, you know. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it's like they'll do something. It's like, no, nah, man, this guy's psycho. <laughs> yeah. And you're going, oh, that's right. Yeah, he's 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 not working on the full deck, you know. Oh, yeah. No, no. You're, you're constantly worried now for Victor. Yeah. You know this is not a good dude, man. Yeah, this yeah. dude. Yeah. He's a psychopath. Yeah. He's, he's, yeah. But that's a great character because mm -hmm. he's complex. Yeah. Because on one hand, you understand what maybe why he's like that. He just takes it a little too far, you know. But again, great acting across the board. It's it's the best show. Of, it is literally the best show of the year. I hear it's going. it's gotten better in ratings and stuff like that. No, I, I, I think it's probably the most fun I've had. I would. Now, I will. I will I, my, my final thought on this 
don't do a sequel if you, there's no story to tell. Right. This this will work better as a standalone, and it's okay sometimes I have a standalone. I think the dangers of this industry is if it's successful, there's always got to be a sequel. Not everything always has to be a sequel. No, no. You know, it's just like because this storyline of the Penguin ties back into the Batman. Yeah. And this does a better job than any of the Marvel shows that I actively want to be watching and right. actively have gotten something out of it. I've not seen and, one single Marvel episode of any of the episodes of Marvel that I've really enjoyed. Yeah, and so it's like watching this is like, and I could even argue maybe the Penguin might be even better than the Batman because of well, stuff in a lot of respects, I mean, it's 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 a lot more intense. Oh, I mean, so, that rated R, they earned that rated they R. They earned it, yeah, and, and to a point where I don't, I forget that I'm watching a Batman universe type show. Because, like I said, I've been to the story so, so focused into those characters and into that and into, into that world that it's just it's a mob story. It's a mob it's story. It's a straight yeah. up mob it story. It is the Godfather for comic books. It really is, yeah. and it just happens to be in Gotham City. Right, right. But they and they're smart to never mention Batman. Yeah. Because I think had they mentioned it, then all of a sudden I'd be like, oh, that's right, there's a Batman show. I'll still sometimes do that when I go, oh wait a minute, we're in Gotham. Okay. Well, yeah, the the. It's all based in real life. I oh, mean, yeah. it's it, it. You feel like you're watching this, and I, I don't. I just want to make one comment about that one episode mm. that actually showed you the flood that we saw in the yes, Batman. Yes, that was episode. I think it's episode th- two or three. I yeah, I can't remember exactly what episode yes. it was, but I remember even seeing the movie when they flooded Gotham. Yeah. I thought, okay, you know, it didn't affect me nearly was, as much yeah. as when I saw it in this in this show because they the way they shot it and the way the camera was placed and the and, and the way they went about it was visceral mm-hmm. and you felt it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It was be and but it was personal. Yeah. Because when in the Batman when they showed the flooding in Gotham, it was really from the floor plans. Mm-hmm. And they dissolve into the floor plans into a model of Gotham. And half the time I kept thinking, is this really happening in real time? Yeah. Or yeah. is this in Batman's head? And then I realized it was. What the TV show does is it shows you someone that lived in that neighborhood who was up on the roof with his girlfriend and mm-hmm. his friends. And what was so smart is when those explosions went off, the first explosion didn't even occur to me that that was a real explosion. I mm-hmm. thought it was like fireworks and stuff. It was when the second explosion happened where I went, "Oh shit, that's the Riddler's bomb." Yeah, yeah. And they were, and also they were so close to the water bank, so when that third explosion hit, terrifying. Right. It was in, and on that level, the show really now makes it real. So, as cool as the Batman is, the Penguin is a much more grounded, real life type of world. It does very much what the Dark Knight does. For the comic book movies, it stopped from Batman Begins comic book, Dark Knight Heat. This is well, I, and I think, and, I, and I, honestly, I, I think, I think the Penguin, and even the Batman to a certain extent, but uh, especially the Penguin, has done something that unfortunately DC I think needed to do for a long time. Mm-hmm. Is that embrace its darkness? Yeah, because well. the fact that yeah, but the fact that. Uh, the Penguin is so dark, and it's so violent. It is and the it, darkest it, out of any of the DC products. It, you feel like you're watching Scarface, really. Yeah. I mean, you're watching yeah. a Scarface-level type character, mm-hmm. and they're not pulling any punches. Nope. This is violent. They're they're cursing. You know, they're 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 Penguin dropping the f bomb. That, that's yeah. another thing. Yeah. I, I I love the fact they made Gaza an old time gangster. Yeah, you know, they made the Penguin an old time gangster. It was yeah. it was. It was the, it was the world that we always believed that was in the it's in the Gotham comics and it's in DC comics, mm-hmm. but rarely do you ever see that type of world. They never go all the life. way because they still want that you, they you still want the that teenage rating. audience. You know they yeah. they still want the the young people to come and see the movie. So so they're not going as dark as they could. Now the problem with Marvel though, it's it's a different feel. It it that they don't go as dark or at least at no, least they have I mean, it in the past. But I mean, yeah. Which, which, which is the, it, it, that's their thing. But I always felt like DC was messing out because they were trying to emulate Marvel instead of just kind of being their own thing. But I mean, I, I but I think DC learned that lesson a few years ago because once they said, look, with the first Joker, first Joker, they did the. <laughs> oh, Marvel- you're not a big fan of Joker too, Greg? <laughs> okay. I, I'm uh-huh. not going to mention. Uh-huh. I don't, there's only one Joker. Talk. Yeah. 
So the first Joker does the R rating. It mm -hmm. does an actual R rating, makes a billion dollars. And I put the Academy Penguin Award. right up there with the first Joker. Oh, no, no. Yeah. But this is even more so. This yeah. is even more so. But I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, even the Suicide Squad, the yeah. James Gunn Suicide Squad, more interesting because yeah. the violence is real and it's rated R. And I do think that Zack Snyder has been the one that's been borderlining on R to PG-13 R because his shit is dark. Right. Penguin does something that nobody else has done, maybe with the exception of The Dark Knight, which is grounded, and only Batman seems to be the only comic book character that can blend a PG uh, movie to a, a uh, rated R TV show or rated right. R movie mm -hmm. because Batman is real. Meaning, mm -hmm. he's a human being. He's not a superhero. And Batman started in 1940, so he was a noir detective, basically, mm -hmm. with you know, with ears. <laughs> so, you know, in the original Batman, he carried a gun. Uh -huh. In that first comics, he had a gun. And well, but gun. then, the, you know, the, the remember the back in those days, you had something called, like, what is it, a comic, the comic book censor, the censor, the the censor code. code. So they came in and said, you can't do that because the kids were reading these comic books. So, so they had to get rid of the gun and stuff gun. like that. Yeah, yeah so... But it allowed it, it allowed to, to analyze Batman and his rogue gallery with realistic, the more realistic it's got. Like I said, The Dark Knight was the first to, I was not, when I watched The Dark Knight, I'm not watching a comic book movie at all. Mm -hmm. I'm, like I said, it's heat. Mm -hmm. It just happens to be in Gotham. The Penguin really leans heavily into its roots as a mob movie, as a mob show. And and the fact that it's not, they're not holding back. It's beautiful. The fact that they are fucking and they're cussing and they're killing graphically, even to a point where I, it's, the Penguin fought, is more of a horror story at times mm -hmm. because even the graphic violence is as graphic as some, a lot of horror movies that I've seen. Right. And that's all fine and dandy and everything like that, but... Uh... The the most important thing is it's well written. It's, a story. it's well written. It, the the stories are an excellent. The pacing is very good. I mean, this it's a good show. You, this is how it's you subvert show. expectations. Yeah, you actually take the comic character seriously in the world he lives in, and then you can craft it in the genre that it's meant to be and make it for adults, so that we can sit there and mm -hmm. watch it and forget that we, this is even a comic book character and the performance that Colin Farrell gives Oz. Is I look at Oz now as a as another actor, you know, and poor Richard Kind because remember when the Penguin first showed up in the Batman, he looked just like Richard Kind, the actor that we, that's now on Only Murders in the Building, and I'm I'm bet he's sitting there like you could have got me, you could have got me, <laughs> you get you get someone like Colin Farrell and you bury under prosthetics. Yeah, and, but you know, you know excellent show, check it out.